Welcome to Riverside. In this video, we're going to provide a complete walkthrough of the Riverside platform, from creating your first studio, to recording in high quality video and audio, and then even editing that content in the new supercharged Riverside editor. So let's jump into it. Go to riverside.fm in Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge web browsers, and then you can click the Login button in the top right corner. From here, you can either create a new account or log in with your current account. Once you've logged in, you'll see any past recordings you might have done here in your Riverside account, but let's create a new studio from scratch so we can see all the settings. I'm going to click the plus button here in the upper left hand corner. Once you create a new studio, you'll use it over and over again to record the same type of content. So if you're creating a studio for a podcast, name the studio, the name of your podcast, and you'll always go to that studio to record. If you have webinars you'll be doing for your business, you can name it webinars, and then you'll do all your webinars here in the same studio. I'll name the studio my new podcast. You can choose to record audio only, but we recommend recording video and audio. Even if you don't think you're going to use the video right away, it's great to have, especially for our magic clips feature, which creates vertical videos of your content using AI, but I'll explain more of that later. By the way, there's going to be chapters at the bottom of this video. So if you want to jump forward into our studio or how to use the editor, you can use that below. Riverside has AI transcriptions in over 100 languages, and you can choose that language here when creating your studio. You can also even add a future recording date right here, or we can just choose to create the studio. Now here we are in our new studio. We don't have any recordings yet, but there are some other settings we might want to adjust before we jump into recording. I'll put my mouse here in the left hand sidebar. And here you'll see all the studios, a part of your account, displayed. If you have lots of studios, you can actually search for a studio name up here, and you'll see this filters by your search term automatically. You can also organize your studios by newest to oldest or reverse. And if you do want to schedule a future recording, here in my studio, I'll go to plan recording and then schedule. Let's choose something at a future date. We choose our time zone. And once that's scheduled, you can then copy this link. And with this link, you can invite remote guests to record with you in your Riverside studio. You can also invite audience members if you're doing a live stream and audience members can see everything you're doing while you record. And once you stop recording, they won't see the live stream anymore. This is a great way to host a webinar either internally, or if you want to live stream with Riverside, you can actually publish it to YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and any RTMP destination. You can also choose to send an email to your remote guests. This way they have all the information they need to join your recording. Again, if you're inviting someone to be recorded in your Riverside studio, be sure to send them the guest link, copy that and send it to them. A third role, you can also invite a producer. Producers are not recorded, but they can do things like manage the chat. If you're doing a live stream, they can screen share and keep an eye on all the technical aspects of the recording to make sure everything goes smoothly. Most often it will be guest, copy, and then you can send people that link. Once you've scheduled a recording, you'll see it appear here at the top of the studio information. And in your studio listing here in the left hand sidebar, you'll also see the next recording date and that studio will jump to the top. I can add this to my Google calendar right here, or I can click the three dots and remove this recording date. And you'll see it's removed here in the studio and the studio drops down with the rest here in the left hand sidebar. If I want to get back to that invite link, I can click the plan recording and then choose invite to record. This guest link stays the same all the time. That makes it easy to set up a scheduling application like Calendly, and you can use the same link. So anyone who schedules a time with you will come into this studio using the same guest link. So just a reminder that guest link is persistent and it does not change. So it's helpful to use in meeting invites or scheduling with a third party app. Now, before we get recording, let's scroll over to our studio name here in the left hand sidebar. If you have longer studio names, you can put your mouse right here on this line separator, click and drag it to change the sidebar size. But let's click these three dots and go into studio settings. Here we have some settings available to us, like enable a lobby waiting room. If you want to make sure to admit any guests that are going to be recording with you so they don't just pop in once they click the link, you can enable the lobby waiting room here. You also have the scheduling option in the studio settings. You can change the recording mode, video and audio or audio only. Also for audio sample rate, if you'll be doing audio and video, we recommend 48 kilohertz. If you're doing audio only, you can choose 44.1. And by default, Riverside records each guest at 720p, but you can also choose advanced recording for 1080p, or if you have a 4K camera or capture device, you can record up to 4K video quality. If you need to change the transcription language after creating the studio, you can do that here. You can also enable or disable a five second countdown timer after hitting the record button. 
I'll leave that toggled on so you see what that looks like. And you can even toggle on automatic recording so as soon as anyone enters the studio, they're automatically recorded. If you're gonna be inviting audience members to view a live stream, you can make that number visible to everyone or toggle it off so only you see it. And as I mentioned before, you can live stream to all these different platforms and any custom RTMP destination. Just toggle these on, put in the stream URL and stream key, and as soon as you hit record, you'll be live streaming to these destinations. If you wanna learn more about live streaming with Riverside and a lot of the other features I'll be talking about in this video, I'll put links down in the description, but live streaming specifically, check this video out right up here. Finally, if we scroll to the bottom, if you notice that your guests have slower internet speeds and you might be experiencing jittery live call, you can choose to pause the uploads, but I would leave this toggled off because the benefit of Riverside is it uploads that high quality video and audio as you're recording. So by the time you hit end, when you're finished with your recording, after just a few seconds, everyone's video and audio will be completely uploaded. Now let's jump back into our studio so we can get recording. Back on our studio page, let's click the go to studio button. Now here in the Riverside lobby is where you choose your camera, microphone, and speaker output, and whether or not you're using headphones. Here underneath your video preview, click the camera icon and choose one of the camera options down here. You can also use continuity camera with an iPhone for high quality video using your mobile device. Also choose your microphone and speaker output. And if you prefer to disable the camera and video feed, you can click the camera icon here. Finally, we recommend using wired headphones whenever you record. Multiple reasons, you don't have to worry about battery or AirPods and other wireless headphones dying in the middle of a recording but also wearing wired headphones means you can monitor your own voice in your ear, which is key to making sure you sound great throughout the recording. So once you've plugged in some headphones, click I am using headphones, and then we can click join studio. Now here in the studio, you have lots of powerful tools available to you. First of all, if you need to adjust any more of those settings, this gear icon at the top, this gives you access to all those settings we looked at before, like the audio sample rate, whether or not you want the countdown timer to record, and even your live stream settings. If you need to grab that guest link to send someone so they can record with you, click the invite button here at the top and then choose guest from this drop down menu, copy link, send that to them and someone else can record with you. Riverside also has mobile apps for iPhone, Android and iPad and you can record high quality video and audio from anywhere using those devices. We have lots of videos on how to set that up. I'll put links down in the description for that. If we X out of this, we can name our recording up here. I've just named it new recording. And we have another invite button just to make sure you can get to it easily anywhere in the studio. If you find that someone has background noise, maybe it's an air conditioner or some traffic noise, you can toggle remove background noise right here, but you can also do this after the fact in the Riverside editor. And I'll show you that in a moment. We also have low data mode, which if you experience stuttering or freezing during the call, you can enable low data mode, but everyone is still being recorded in high quality on their local device. It will pause uploads and it might lower the live call quality, meaning what you see while you record. But once you hit stop, all the high quality video and audio files are still uploaded to your Riverside dashboard and you can download everything yourself. That's another huge benefit of Riverside. You don't need anyone to send you large video and audio files or have them upload them to a cloud service. You get to access all the files from your account. No one has to send you anything. Underneath the low data mode setting, you'll see yourself and any remote guests that have joined you here in the studio. If you expand this window, you can see what video quality they're recording from, how they're tuning in, whether it's the web or an app, and you'll see the devices that they have used for camera and microphone. This is great if you're having guests, you can see what microphone and speaker they're using. If they have a USB mic connected to their device, but maybe it's not selected here in Riverside, you can see that on your end and then prompt them to change their device before you start recording. Keep in mind, you can't change devices once you start recording, so kind of have a pre-flight checklist, which we actually have a video on that, I'll leave it down below, and make sure that everyone has the right devices chosen. Before we get recording, there's a few tools to keep in mind that if you use it while you record, it can make your editing process way faster. First of all is the media board. If I click the media icon down here in the bottom right, I can upload video and audio files and actually play these live during the recording. When I play these video files, I actually get these as a separate track in my Riverside dashboard when I'm done recording. Me and my remote guests will see this video while we record and it will be in the Riverside editor in our final export and I don't have to download anything. I can export it all put together right from Riverside. You can upload video or audio files up to 100 megabytes in size right here in the media board. Also, we have a chat window if you'd like to communicate with your other guests via text. This could be for planning or prompting the next question in an interview. And you can go back to the people tab to see everyone in the recording. At the bottom, you can leave, which will end the call for all or just yourself can leave the studio. 
You can share your screen, which is a powerful tool if you want to share a web browser, share slides if you have Keynote or Google Slides open, another great way to share visual elements, and you'll get separate tracks recorded for all your screen shares, and I'll show you what that looks like too. You can even upload a script and have a teleprompter here in your studio. So if you're doing a prepared statement or maybe you're addressing your team, you can have the script right here and even go into teleprompter mode and read the script as you record. Or you can just put bullet points and an overall plan for your recording right here. You still have the speaker, camera, and microphone input, which you can change devices before you start recording. And while you record, you can still turn off your camera or microphone and turn it back on. If you need to mute yourself to cough or you need to step away for a moment during the recording, you can disable the camera or mic here and then re-enable when you're ready to join in. To start recording, I can hit the big record button. I can run a test recording, which is helpful. It will record about 10 seconds and you'll get a preview to see what everyone's video and audio looks like before you start the actual recording, really helpful. And when you're ready, click start recording. You'll get that five second countdown, which you can disable in the studio settings. And now you're recording high quality video and audio. It's recording locally to every guest device and that's being uploaded to Riverside so you can access it later. You'll see an upload progress while you're recording here at the top. You'll see I'm already 99% uploaded and it usually stays that way throughout the recording for me. And you can see each individual's participant, how much of their video and audio has been uploaded as well. This will fluctuate throughout the recording. You don't have to watch this. It's uploading in the background. You do your recording, your podcast, webinar, whatever it is. And then when you're done recording, click the stop button here in the bottom. You also see that counting timer, which is helpful to know how long you've been going. Once you've stopped recording, you'll see an upload progress for you and all your remote guests. And once everyone has the green check mark and successfully uploaded content, you're ready to go into the editor and Riverside Recordings page to access that video and audio. You can click view recordings here and you'll jump back into your studio listing and you'll see your recordings listed. Once you have multiple recordings in a studio, it'll look like this. These are the names that I put in the studio before we started recording. And let's jump into a past recording to see all the options available. You can preview the recording up here. Here's our AI show notes feature. One click and it will generate key takeaways, a description and timestamps for your content, really helpful. Underneath that is Magic Clips. With one click, you can generate lots of vertical videos. Riverside using AI does this for you. You'll get multiple clips in just a few seconds and then you can edit those further, download them and share them on social media. We also have a full episode option which will put you and all your remote guests in side by side, incorporate those screen shares and media board files, and that video is ready to upload to YouTube or wherever you put your video podcasts. If we scroll down to the bottom, here you'll see both you and your remote guests recording tracks and any screen shares or media board files are available below that. For every guest, you can click the high quality button. You can download the raw video, which is high quality video, aligned video, meaning if someone joined the studio late or left early, we'll put blank space at the beginning and end to make sure the track is the same length. Makes it easier to line up if you're using an external editor. You can also download the raw audio, which is an uncompressed WAV file or a compressed MP3 file for each individual track. And any screen share you might've done or media board files, you can download those tracks both as a raw video and that aligned video to make sure it's the same length track. If someone left the studio early or had a technical difficulty and their track is not fully uploaded, click the three dots here up at the top and choose copy link to upload page. Send your guests that link and if they go to it in the same browser and on the same computer they use to record, their video and audio files can continue uploading even after you've done everything in the studio. Oh, and look, here's our AI generated show notes with a summary, takeaways, and lots of helpful chapter timestamps that I can copy and paste right into YouTube. If you wanna share the files for this recording, maybe with an editor or producer, I can click this share button here, and this is gonna give someone the ability to download these video and audio files, and I don't have to deal with another cloud service or download and then upload them somewhere else. I can just copy that link and send it to someone. They can access all these files. But the real magic happens in the Riverside editor. So let's click create new edit here in the upper right corner. And here in the Riverside editor is where all the magic happens. Not only are you and your remote guests color coded here in the transcript, you also see the waveforms here at the bottom color coded, and you can edit your content like you would a Word document. I can select words or sentences, click delete, and I've literally edited the audio and video plus the transcript of this recording. If I'd like, I can toggle off what I've deleted so I can focus on just the content remaining. And when I search for a word or phrase, it will show me every instance where that word or phrase shows up in the recording, both here in the transcript, I can use the arrows to navigate to all the instances of that word, and I even see the timestamps, context, and who spoke it 
down here in the timeline. As you're editing your content and the transcript, if you would like to download the edited version of the transcript, you can do that here, and you can even adjust the chapters and then copy that list for YouTube. I can create chapters just by clicking in the words, and then click the three dots, and then add a chapter. That new chapter appears here, and you'll also see it down here in the timeline. Then if I copy the chapter list, that will be included with the timestamps. Down here in the timeline, I can even drag the start point of a chapter to make sure it's placed precisely, or if I don't prefer this chapter, I can click the three dots and remove just the chapter name or delete all the content associated in this chapter. Another magic part of Riverside is everything is non-destructive. So this clip that you're editing does not affect your raw recordings. You can create a new clip from scratch with the entire video and audio still included with everything just how you recorded it. Also any screen shares or media board files will actually be incorporated here in the editor. Now I can adjust how this is laid out. Right now it's in a grid icon and it will focus on any screen shares or media board files. I can add spacing between the different video elements, even round the corners. And then I can upload things like a custom background image to make sure it's on brand when I upload this video. Now here, this is really looking like my video podcast. You can also upload a custom logo and that will be persistent throughout the entire clip. Now let's say I wanted to make a vertical video for social media. I can click up here on the aspect ratio and quickly switch to a vertical nine by 16 without having to create a new project or a new clip. It's all done right here. If I wanna hide one of the clips, maybe it was a screen share or media board file, I can click the tracks option and here you'll see every screen share that happened during the recording. If I choose to hide the screen shares, now it will just focus on me and my co-host. I can reorder me and my co-host if I wanna be on top and put him on bottom, all of it right here in the editor. Then I can also choose to add captions using the transcript that you can still edit. These captions will follow along as someone speaks and we've even added a highlight color option so as you're talking and the captions are rolling, now you'll see the highlighted words as the captions go along throughout the entire clip. We have lots of different options for the captions, different styles, fonts, and sizes. If I want, I can switch back to my widescreen format with just a few clicks, and I can now add text overlays as well. Maybe I wanna add a lower third for my guest's name. I can add text overlays right here in the Riverside editor and still get my font, sizing, color, and justification options. I can add multiple text overlays throughout this clip. We also have other magic tools like remove silences. I can apply and remove any amount of silence I would like. And I can even set the pace of silence removal. If I wanna cut down every second of silence, maybe this is for a vertical clip on TikTok, I can do that. Or to keep the natural flow of conversation, I can just remove the longer silences. And you'll see how many seconds of silences are removed and how many. Finally, if you want to insert other media into this edit, I can click the plus button here at the end or between any two clips, and I can pull from other recordings in my Riverside Studios. I can choose another edit that I started or upload new video or audio to insert here in this clip. Then when I'm all ready to export this video to upload to YouTube or elsewhere, I can click the share button in the upper right hand corner, export up to 4K video. Normalized audio levels will make you and your guests all the same volume. You can remove the Riverside watermark and then click export. You'll get an email when this clip is ready to download. And once it's ready, you'll also see it here in your Riverside studio. You can click the download icon right here and that video is ready for you to upload to YouTube or wherever you post your video podcasts. You can also export an audio only version of this clip. I can go into the tracks icon. I'm gonna choose to hide the video if I hide all the video tracks and then go up to the share button, now I can export a WAV uncompressed audio file or an MP3 audio file and upload that to my podcast host. And I still have the normalized audio levels option to make sure the volume is great throughout the recording. And that's how to use the entire Riverside platform from beginning to end to record your high quality video and audio content all the way to editing it and publishing that video and audio. If you have any questions, leave comments below this video. I answer those personally. And don't forget to subscribe to the Riverside YouTube channel. We have lots of videos on building your video podcast setup, advice on microphones, and as we launch new features, there'll also be a video per feature. And so check out this playlist right up here. You can learn about all the new features right now at Riverside. And if you wanna learn more about how your podcast shows up in different apps and how to optimize them, you can check out this video right up here. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.